Welcome everyone to the 2022 final presentations for the Lakeland College Livestock Units of the Student Managed Farms, powered by New Holland. I'm Bailey Ferguson, I'm from Kitscotty, Alberta. I've worked on a bison cattle and horse ranch for the past few years. I will be the leader of the newest SMF unit, the bison unit, in its first year in 2022-2023. We are gathered here today on traditional Treaty 6 territory and Region 2 of the Métis Nation of Alberta. At Lakeland College, we acknowledge that the Indigenous people were the first people in our country, and we respect and honour their history and the roots of their nation. I would like to introduce a few people from the audience now. If you could raise your hand when your name is called, that would be great. Dr. Alice Wainwright Stewart, President and CEO of Lakeland College. Jeff Brown, Dean of Agriculture Sciences. Tracy Quinton, Chair of Agriculture Sciences. The staff at RADAR, Research Driven Agriculture Services Research. Results. <laughs> Aiden Webbs from Webbs New Holland Machinery. Um, there are a number of industry representatives who have joined us both online and in the theater today. Welcome. We appreciate your support not only today but throughout the year. I would also like to welcome the friends and family who have joined us online. Hello. Hello. Um, my name is McKenna Martin. I'm from Lashburn, Saskatchewan, and I have the honor of being the 2022-2023 um, Extensive Grazing Research Unit Leader. Um, I just have a few housekeeping details for you all. Uh, washrooms are out the doors on my left and to the left along the hall and out the doors on my right and to the right along the hall. Um, please turn off your cell phones or put them on silent as to not interrupt any of the presentations. Um, in the case of an emergency, there are both emergency at exits at the top and bottoms of the stairs and the muster point is across College Drive in the parking lot north of Alumni Hall. Um, there will be times for questions after each presentation, but in the interest of time, we limit to two or three per unit. If you have more questions, please ask the students during intermission or after the presentations have concluded. Um, we, are moder we are monitoring the YouTube stream, and if you have questions while watching online, please post them in the chat. I would now like to invite the extensive grazing research unit up to the stage to present. Good afternoon and welcome to the 2021-2022 Extensive Grazing Research Unit Student Managed Farm Final Presentations. My name is Kira Axley and I've been the General Manager of this unit this year. This is the team that I have worked with throughout the year. As you can see, we all hold various coordinator positions to ensure for effective management of our unit. Our unit is in its sixth year of operation and is made up of seven students here at Lakeland College coming from across Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Ontario. The purpose of our unit is to maintain a sustainable and economically viable extensive herd while exploring various cattle management practices. Our unit strives to achieve maximum grazing time while remaining extensive and low maintenance in our management and continuing to build a strong maternal cow herd that contains a large amount of background performance and breed composition data. Last year's unit left us with six recommendations to complete throughout our year. They recommended to continue to gather RFI data on our herd, as well as to buy a new Hereford bull for the upcoming breeding season. 
They also recommended to sell the calf crop privately again and to wean the calves based on break-even calculations, body condition scores, and feed availability. They recommended to continue to explore options for parasite control and to continue to use Microsoft Teams for organization. This year, we weaned our calves based on break-even calculations as well as feed availability and pasture availability. We then sold the calves by private treaty. This spring, we purchased a two-year-old Hereford bull as well as completed an RFI trial on our replacement heifers. Throughout the year, we continued to use Microsoft Teams for communication and data storage purposes. Hello, my name is Charity Logan. SWOT analysis helps us to identify our strengths and weaknesses within our unit. It also allows us to look at our external factors through opportunities and threats. For our strengths, we have work ethic because we are a small team willing to work together to accomplish our tasks. We also have our bull purchase from Holloway Farms on February 15th. Plus, we have designated pasture for our herd over the summer. For some weaknesses, we have our length of calving season due to the neighbor's bulls getting in with our herd, meaning we are calving earlier. We also have our loss of the Allendale bull due to breeding soundness and reduction of herd inventory due to our heavy calling this last year. For some opportunities, we have our research demo that we just finished comparing feed rations on our replacement heifers. We also had the opportunity to put some of our replacement heifers in a three-year research trial ran by Dr. Susan Marcus. An opportunity for next year's team is the potential to put some of our replacement heifers in the Roundup sale in 2023. Also with being a small team, we gain more hands-on experience. For threats, we have negative feedback that many livestock producers face within the industry especially in job involving animal welfare and how the public perceives our animal treatment. Environmental conditions and feed and grass availability are also threats we face. Hello, my name is Ali Duell and I am this year's Herd Health and Reproductive Coordinator. This year, our current total inventory would be 59 mature cows, five bred heifers, 16 replacement heifers, and two herfer bulls. For our key performance indicators, industry standard for growth rate is 43% of the dam's weight. Ours ended up being a 37.6% of the dam's weight, and this is because we weaned before the 205 days is typical. We weaned earlier because of our feed shortages this year. For open rate, industry standard is 4% throughout the herd. Ours ended up being an astonishing 0% this year. We are very pleased with this. For a length of calving season, industry standard is 63 days, and ours ended up being 111 days. This is due to the neighbor's bulls getting in by accident on one of our pastures. And for death loss, industry standard is 4% throughout the year, and ours ended up being a 5.9. This increased from our mid-years due to the loss of one of our mature cows this semester. Hello, my name is Madison Maskey and I'm this year's nutrition coordinator. This year, cows have been extensively grazing on LC 15 and 16, where they are first let out on December 20th and will remain here until calving on April 25th. After weaning, our cows were let onto oats double on LC 2, where because of high nitrates, we were not able to swath graze. We chose to bale these swaths and mix them with green feed and hay and shred it on pasture, as this was the best way to ensure they weren't consuming too much of the high nitrates. They received this until January 16th when their bale grazing started. Our heifers have been on demo since February 7th. After weaning, all 16 were put on our controlled ration of corn silage, barley grain, hay, straw, and supplement. On February 7th, five remained on this ration and five went on to our demo of alfalfa pellets, green peas, straw, and supplement. Our controlled ration had a cost of $2.11 per head per day, and our demo ration had an increased cost of $4.65 per head per day because of the alfalfa pellets. Our bale ratio consisted of seven hay and three barley green feed, which they were fed once weekly, giving them 30.7 pounds per head per day. We chose this ratio because with what feed we had available on farm, it best suited the nutritional needs of our herd. 
Our cows were consuming more than their anticipated amount each week, so we were supplementing them more later in the week as needed. Because of feed shortages, we tried to reduce wastage as much as possible by feeding our bales and ring feeders and making our cows clean up all of their feed before receiving more. The cost of bale grazing was $105 per hay bale and $85 per barley green feed, with a projected cost of $2.14 per head per day, but an actual cost of $2.39 because of the extra bales used. Hello, my name is Charity Logan. I am this year's range and forage coordinator. For our summer grazing plan, our goal is to graze 135 days, starting April 25th to September 25th. Each pasture will be broken into paddocks and will be grazed for various days according to carrying capacity. A paddock is a restricted area that helps prevent the animals from overgrazing the land. We will use a semi-permanent electric fence to make up the alleyways to allow the cows access to the corrals for water. We will also use the razor grazer to make up the paddocks and it will be moved as needed. For further information on the paddock breakdown, please refer to the booklet. This is a high intensity, low frequency grazing plan. The benefit of this plan is to make the animals consume the less desirable grasses and allow the grass time to rest and regrow. Hi, my name is Courtney Corbier and I'm this year's mixed farm coordinator. Every year we try to bring in bullseye nutritionists twice a year prior to us spreading the manure. This allows us to know what nutrients is in our manure as well as to know the quantity of each nutrient there is. Last spring we spread 900,000 gallons of liquid manure onto LC 14, 15, and 16. This year we have already tentatively booked in the second spreading to happen in the end of April, weather dependent of course. The reason that we believe this has to happen a bit sooner than last year is due to the fact that the dairy barn had two main water lines burst this past winter. The solid manure was spread last year on LC 1 and 3, 11, 20, and 21. This year, we have already tentatively booked in for the solid manure to be placed on LC20. The reason that we believe this has to be placed all there is due to the fact that this field has not had enough nutrients placed into it over the past 25 plus years. We plan on protilling the manure into the ground to help the, break it into the soil stronger, better, as well as to have a stronger yield in the coming years. Last fall, we spread 1.3 million gallons of liquid manure onto AL01 and LC12. When it comes to determining which fields we place our manure on, we look at the cropper's soil tests and crop rotation. This allows us to then know exactly which fields are needing the manure to help it have a stronger yield the coming years. Another project that we decided as a mixed farm that needed to be completed this year was to create a manure record sheet. This was to allow us to have a stronger documentation and records from year to year to know which fields have been receiving manure, the quantity of it, and then also knowing what our soil test levels are per field. As you can see on the far left in the blue is all the fields the college owns and in the center is the solid manure and the liquid manure. This is split into the season, spring and fall, to help us determine which fields have received the quantity of manure. And then on your far left is showing the soil test. It has all the levels per field, and as you can see, the phosphorus and potassium for LC1 and 3, 4 and 5, and 11 are the highest. This is due to the fact that these fields are the closest to the college and this has been determined that we need to help spread the manure to all the other fields. On the crop side, this allows us to have a strong documentation to know exactly, have one central location to see the manure and the soil test. And on the AST side, this allows us to then know exactly a better biosecurity of knowing where we can then place our animals on for crop grazing or crop uh, stubble grazing. 
For our herd health and treatments this year, we ended up treating two of our mature cows as they were showing lameness within their hind legs. We treated them with biomycin to help with any wound infection as well as Medicam to help with pain relief. We also had to treat one of our heifer calves post weaning as she was showing symptoms of labored breathing and nasal discharge. We treated her with Resflor and we did not have to retreat. On March 14th, our team welcomed our first early calf. He was a full-term calf. We give him vitamin A, D, and E, as well as selenium to help with any deficiencies, as well as tagged and banded him. For vaccinations, on February 18th, we give our bred heifers their first initial rounds of Scourguard, and then on March 18th, we give our bred heifers and our mature cows their pre-calving vaccinations. We followed our herd's standard opera proceeding operating proceeding procedures to help with this. We use ScourGuard 4KC to help prevent with any scours within our calves, Ultrabac 7, Somibac to help protect against several different types of clostridial disease, as well as Ivamac for parasite control. For reproduction, we will have two main breeding groups this season, a Herford sire group and an Angus sire group, and our bull to cow ratio is 1 to 30. We decided to have our two Herford sire our larger breeding group as we want to add more and new diverse Herford genetics into our group. Our breeding season will start on July 23rd and will end on September 25th when the bulls are pulled from the pastures. Our predicted calving season is to start May 1st of 2023 next year. Hello, my name is Regan Holbin and I was a part of this year's Bull Purchase Committee. On February 15th, the team attended Holloway Farms Hereford Bull Sale at which we purchased Lot 177H Holloway Farms 149C Superman. We selected this bull as he had a low birth weight which is crucial as we calve our herd on pasture. He also had an impressive performance when comparing his 522 pound weaning weight to his 1100 pound yearling weight. Although these two attributes were desirable to the unit, our purchasing criteria also included ensuring that we only purchased a pulled bull, focusing on proper conformation, including strong feet and legs, and having a relatively calm temperament as the safety of handlers and students is a major priority. My name is Mackenzie Williamson and I'm this year's financial coordinator. I'd like to indicate that for the remainder of the graphs, the green will represent the income we were budgeted from last year's team, while blue represents what we have either earned or spent this year. For our income this year, we received income from our culled cows, heifers, steers, and our selling of our Allendale bull, as mentioned in the SWOT analysis. We as a team decided to have a higher culling rate on our cows due to bad feet. This allowed us to have a higher income for our culled cattle. For our, I've separated the feed expense from the remainder of the expenses due to this as being our highest expense budgeted to us. Last year's team budgeted us, budgeted us with $65,000 and to date we have spent 55, $55,565 of this budget. For these expenses, we were able to save money on our parents' testing due to the Who's Your Daddy trial that has been running for the last three years. We were also able, we have not spent any income on the ultrasounding yet either this year due to that is being booked for the first week of April and yet we have not, we have not yet had an invoice for this expense. Our team's net income this year was $237, and our cost of production this year was $1.73 per pound of wean calf. For more information on the expenses of this year, the cost of production, and the budget we have presented for next year's team, please reference the book. My name is Kira Axley, and I was also the trials coordinator for our unit this year. Following a recommendation from last year's team, we also completed a residual feed intake trial on our replacement heifers. This trial ran for a 60-day collection period starting February 7th and concluded on April 7th. Throughout this trial, we were uh, collecting each heifer's individual feed intake as well as calculating their average daily gain throughout the trial. By completing this trial, we are working to determine each heifer's individual feed efficiency. We are 
completing this trial as we are hoping to continue to build our herds data bank for feed efficiency and to use these values in the future to help select efficient replacement heifers. Our demo, our unit also created a demo this year which we completed with the use of alfalfa pellets. This demo also ran for a 60 day collection period in conjunction with our RFI trial. The main question that this demo was, that we were hoping to answer with this demo is which of the two rations is most cost effective and efficient when developing replacement heifers. To complete this demo, we separated our replacement heifers into two groups. One group remained on the controlled ration consisting of silage and other shredded forages. The other half of the heifers were moved onto the variable ration, which used alfalfa pellets as a replacement for the silage and shredded forages. Throughout the collecting period, we measured each heifer's weight gain weekly, as well as measured their frame growth monthly and calculated their average daily gains. The results of this demo are as shown on screen. The variable group of heifers consuming the alfalfa pellets had a higher average weight gain throughout the demo, as well as a higher average daily gain, but they uh, did have a little bit of a slower frame growth. The cost of gain for the variable group was also quite a bit higher than our controlled ration. Because of this increased cost of gain, we did not, we did not think that the alfalfa pellet ration was an economical replacement to the traditional heifer development ration. Hello, my name is Regan Holbin and I was this year's Public Relations and Marketing Coordinator. Break-evens are an important tool to utilize when selling animals. They can be used to help confirm the most beneficial time to sell. This past October, we completed break-evens to help us decide the most economical time to sell our steers. After comparing prices for 30, 60, and 90 days after weaning, as well as selling straight off the dam, we established that selling straight off the dam would be our most financially viable option as by feeding the steers for any length of time post weaning, we would exponentially add to our feed bill due to the increased cost of feed this year. Following the decision to sell straight off the dam, we looked into selling privately as this was a recommendation that last year's team had left for us. I contacted various potential buyers and received a number of different offers. Ultimately, we decided to sell privately as the price offered to us was higher than that of public auction and came in above our break-even price. As a unit, we decided to keep 16 heifers to act as replacements for next year's unit and to be placed into our demo this year. Out of this 16, 10 were placed in our feed demo and 6 were placed in a trial being run by the research department. The remaining 16 heifers were sold to the commercial unit on December 1st for $1.80 per pound. Through Facebook analytics, I was able to determine that our Facebook page has grown since the beginning of the year. In reference to the chart on the top right of the slide, we can see that in the time frame of September 1st to March 25th, we have gained 91 new page likes, which is an increase of approximately 14.5%. This increase means that we have virtually reached our goal of growing our page likes by 15%. Another area of growth for us was in the number of followers we have. On September 1st, we had 695 followers. This has since increased to 797, or approximately 15%. When looking at the demographics of our followers, we can see that approximately 66% are female, while only 34% are male. This actively demonstrates the ever-increasing involvement of women in agriculture. The three posts shown on screen are the three most popular posts that have been added to our Facebook page this year. The post on the far left was our most popular post. It was made to thank Barnyard Creations for the great work done on our team apparel. It received 131 interactions and reached 3,739 people. The middle post was our second most popular post. It was made following our trip to Holloway Farms Hereford Bull Sale at which we purchased a bull. It received 137 interactions and reached 1,941 people. The post on the far right was our third most popular post. 
It was made February 1st, highlighting the details of our alfalfa pellet demo. It received 50 interactions and reached 1,625 people. Hi, my name is Courtney. Some of the recommendations we have for next year's team is to purchase a new Angus bull to replace our Allendale bull, as well as to purchase a bred cow to replace the one from the research department due to the fact that they had an incident occur last summer which had us when they were working on their series tag trial. We also would like to see the team look at planning out the demo in the first semester to help have a smoother transition into the second semester. Here, you can then start deciding if you want to, how many animals you'd like to place into the Roundup sale. This will help you to have a bit more interaction within the sale and with participation within the other units. We also would like to see you ha look into or continue getting data on the RFI. This allows you to keep growing in stronger genetics within your herd to pass on to the offspring, as well as to then improve your feed efficiency. We also would like you to bring more awareness to the research department by interacting with them to see what trials they are working on, as well as helping them out wherever is needed. We also would like you to explore more crop stubble and residue grazing for the fall. This allows you to then better use the Lakeland College land to its full potential. At this time, we'd like to send out some thank yous to our major sponsors and supporters who have contributed to our sec success throughout the year. We would like to start off by thanking New Holland Agriculture for their continued support of Lakeland College's student managed farm. We'd also like to thank Leroy and Kyle, as well as the remaining members of the farm team for all their hard work and help they have given us throughout the year with managing our herd. There are many other faculty members on our list that have been major contributors to our success throughout the year. We would like to thank Bullseye Feed for their continued support of our nutrition programs and for always working with us to make sure that our animals receiving the best feed possible. We would like to thank CG Polgard Farms for purchasing our calves once again this year. Your support is greatly appreciated. We'd also like to thank Barnyard Creations, Holloway Farms, Branded, and Sherry Leachman for their ability, opportunities to increase our networking within the industry and for all the help that they have provided us in successfully managing our herd. This is the conclusion of our presentation and we would now like to open the floor for any questions you may have. Yes, in the top corner. So the question was, in our presentation, we did not highlight what the cost of our summer grazing was and if we could clarify if that was included in the feed budget or not. To answer this question, I'm going to call on our finance coordinator, Mackenzie. Great question. Uh, we found, since we weren't budgeted with uh, grazing costs from last year's team, we just placed our grazing costs in with our feed expense. That's why it was also so high this year, because it covered our grazing costs for over the summers. Does that answer your question? Is there any other questions from the crowd? Yeah. So the question was, what uh, do we feel was the most valuable part about being involved in this SMF unit? And throughout the year, um, we discussed as a team that the most valuable part that we um, gained from being on this unit is being able to see another side of the agriculture industry that maybe isn't as highly published as the traditional purebred or commercial operation. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. 
This is the conclusion of our presentation. Thank you for coming out this afternoon to watch. All right, thank you to the Extensive Grazing Reachers Unit for their presentation this afternoon. Uh, for those on the sides that do not have a seat currently, uh, we'll give you a minute here to take one and then we will continue on with the presentations this afternoon. All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Scott Standeven. I come from a robotic dairy operation in St. Mary's, Ontario. I have the pleasure to lead next year's dairy unit. Uh, speaking of the dairy unit, we're gonna call them up here for their presentation this afternoon. Okay, good afternoon and welcome to this year's Dairy Unit's final presentation. My name is Carson Klukas and I am from Rimby, Alberta. I am this year's Dairy General Manager. This year our team consists of 14 students ranging from Ontario to Alberta. Our mission statement is as follows. We strive to produce quality milk and raise healthy animals focusing on production and efficiency while gaining skills and knowledge to be used in the dairy industry. Our SWOT analysis consists of the following. Our strengths are a strong diversified team, a high heat detection and conception rate in our heifers, high milk quality, and the abundance of technology used for learning. Our weaknesses consist of a low heat detection and conception rate in our milking herd, as well as a high student turnover, poor communication, and our location to our service providers and other dairy farms. Our opportunities are the dry cow facility being built, our partnership with BC Holstein News, genetic improvement in our herd along with implanting embryos, as well as the neonatal study we are currently participating in. Our, some of our threats are biosecurity, the current feed shortage, activism, and the increasing input costs. Goals that we have accomplished this year are monitoring fresh cows, maintaining relationships with other SMF units, and producing quality forage, for example, our 2021 corn silage. Another accomplishment that our team is proud of is our DHI report from the last year. Along with last year's SMF team, we have gotten the Lakeland herd to rank in the top 15% of the first five categories and the top 20% for robot herds in Canada. Uh, goals that are currently ongoing are dry cow and pregnant heifer care, overall hoof health and calf health, as well as continuing to breed cows closer to our voluntary waiting period, increasing our heat detection and conception rate in our milking herd, lowering our feed costs and paper record improvement. Recommendations we have left for next year 
is to work with BC Holstein News promoting Lakeland College and the Dairy SMF program, participating in the Dairy Cost Study, gather average daily gain in health data from our calves to ensure proper calf management, uh, monitor dry cow care and implement a grazing plan, as well as improve, further improve our heat detection and conception rate in our milking herd by implementing an off-sync program, and continue to monitor or improve fresh cow monitoring by submitting a caller proposal with the West End Endowment Fund. Hello, my name is Nicole Poom. I am from Osler, Saskatchewan. I am the public relations coordinator for this year's Dairy SMF team. One of my goals for this year was to look at likes per month. I collected my data from September to March. From September to March, we had an increase of likes by 9.97%. Our most liked and engaged post was our 2021 corn silage post with 121 likes, 44 shares, and reached 15,292 people. Some of the events that the dairy team has been involved with this year are the Westerner Dairy Showcase that happened in October, visiting a Brightspan barn at Plain Lakes Colony near Two Hills, Alberta, County Alberta, in March. We also created a page for a calendar for the Alberta Holstein Association. Our page in the calendar is November. We also have been involved with the BC Holstein News. We made it an article that was published in the BC Holstein News Christmas article. We also submitted another article that should be coming out soon, so keep an eye out for that. If you'd like to follow us for the rest of this year to see more posts, you can follow us on Facebook at Lakeland College SMF Dairy Unit. I collected all of my data off of insights from Facebook. Hi, my name is Noah Vanoss. I'm from Otasquan, Alberta, and I'm this year's Hoof Health Coordinator. This semester, I implemented a new foot bath product to acidify copper sulfate. This has a higher concentration of copper sulfate to help fight off digital dermatitis. Previously, we were using a product called acidify copper zinc sulfate, to help, which helps prevent DD instead of removing it, and it helps harden the hoof horn. From January 10th to March 30th, we use acidified copper zinc on the robot side and acidified copper sulfate on the parlor side. We found that the acidified copper sulfate did a better job preventing and removing DD by 15%. With this information, we alternated the products we use each week so we can get the benefits of both products. At the beginning of the year, approximately 30% of our herd had digital dermatitis, which we have reduced to 10% with the help of intra hoof sole hoof products. We've also had six corns, two sole ulcers, and three cases of foot rot since January. Hello, my name is Caitlin Perry, and I'm from Kingston, Ontario, and I'm this year's Utter Health and Productions Coordinator. This year, I looked into heifer production in the early lactation and looked into the peaks of both first and third lactation. I determined that the heifer should be producing 75% of what the third lactation produces. The purpose of this is to have profitable cows and sustainable production so we, can, so we can pay off our heifers sooner, as well as improve our early lactation and have a better lactation curve, use provided quota, and hit the 75% attainable goal, as well as hit 305 days in milk. On this graph, there are three different events that affect our production, such as switching to half and half 2020 and 2021 corn silage, then switching just to 2021 corn silage, as well as the dry lot changes with feeding less silage and more roughage. Some things that affect my results are heifers coming in with three working quarters, heifer with a displaced abomasum, utter edema, feed changes, dry lot conditions, early calvings, age at first calving, and health issues prior to breeding. Hi, my name is Kim Dornabal, and I am from Tilsonburg, Ontario. I am one of this year's herd health coordinators. As a herd health coordinator, we monitor the health of the herd, the entire herd, excluding the 21 days before and after calving. At mid-years, I brought forward our scour issue in the barn. 
Since mid-years, we have implemented heightened biosecurity protocols, which included restricting unnecessary traffic in and out of calf rooms, as well as continuing our boot washes. Despite our efforts, our numbers have continued to increase. This is likely due to animals being used for various educational purposes. An example of this is on March 16th, we had a lab which you could see directly correlated with another scours outbreak that started a couple days later. As well, in January, you can see our numbers are a little higher. This is when students were doing their shifts with the calves. We care about scours since scours can ultimately affect how that calf turns out to be a cow. The second issue with a DLC is pneumonia. Our pneumonia cases are now well within industry average at 25% of calves aged 0 to 100 days old being affected. Last year, students placed a very heavy emphasis on ventilation in the calf rooms, which has really helped with our pneumonia numbers. At mid-years, my plan was to continue what we are doing since clearly it's been working. We care about pneumonia since, depending on the severity of the case, pneumonia can cause scarring lung tissue, which can actually affect the cow for the rest of her life, as well as the developing cow. It can affect um, her and maybe stunt her growth. Hello, my name is Hannah Reid. I am from Ridgetown, Ontario, and I am one of the herd health coordinators. Average daily gain is something we've been tracking in our heifer calves the first 60 days of life. We weigh tape each calf weekly and record the data. This graph is showing the weights of each calf and how many days old they are. We have reached our goal of getting to an average daily gain of 2 pounds, with our average daily gain being 2.02 pounds per day. Pink eye is something we have been battling with this whole year. It is a contagious virus that is hard to get under control. 33.33% of our lactating herd has been infected with pink eye, 26.05% of our heifers have been infected, and 29.41% of our dry cows have been infected. We have finally got this problem under control by treating everyone infected with pink eye with antibiotics for a week. We recommend for next year's team to keep on top of this virus to reach our goal. I'm Derek Wilson. I'm from Salford, Ontario, and this year's feed management coordinator. As all producers know, it has been a struggle to keep feed costs low this summer due to, uh, due to the drought, and also the rising prices of commodities and our lack of silage has been difficult for us. Some changes that we have made are, de are lowering the amount of barley grain in our lactating mash and increasing corn, and also lowering the amount of barley silage in our lactating ration. To, uh, also this year, one of the upsides was our corn silage. Our starch was at 27.6 compared to last year at 12.8. Due to this energy-rich corn silage, our diet was lacking in fiber. To increase fiber, we added straw. It also reduces our feed costs and also helped maintain rumen function. Another problem we had this year due to our lack of silage our inability to feed silage to our cows. So we started feeding hay and also a 16% heifer grower pellet to our heifers. This added the feed cost, but saved an estimated 132 metric tons of silage. It also helped improve body condition score in our heifers. Before, on TMR, they are getting fed one consistent ration to all of them, and our older heifers are being over-conditioned, and our younger heifers are being under-conditioned. Now that they have a ration that better fits their requirements, they're getting a more optimum body condition score. For more information on rations and cost per head per day, please look in the booklet on pages 15 to 17. Hello, my name is Sydney White. I'm from Bob Cajun, Ontario, and I am one of this year's transition cow coordinators. This year we had 143 cows calve with 80 normal calvings, 14 retained placentas, 19 developed metritis, 22 had ketosis, and 8 had milk fever. Our goals for this year were to reduce the number of retained placentas and milk fever in our herd to improve overall cow health, fertility, and longevity. To accomplish this, we implemented a body condition scoring system as well as closely monitored the lengths of their dry periods. And due to a feed shortage that many producers are currently experiencing, we updated our close-up ration to find a healthy balance while continuing to decrease metabolic disease. The first ration that we implemented was a DCAD ration, which is a dietary cation anion difference. This reduces urine pH to draw calcium from the blood to better prepare our cows from the large draw that is required immediately following calving. 
This ration is typically used to decrease milk fever and retain placentas, but in correlation will also reduce stress, displaced abomasums, and more. Hello, my name is Jeanette Vanderbeek and I'm from Zurich, Ontario, and I'm also one of the transition cow coordinators. At the start of second semester, we implemented urine pH testing on our close-up cows. We took tests weekly on our close-up cows. This helped us to see if our DCAD ration was working or not. Because we were unable to find a balanced pH due to inconsistent potassium levels in our straw, we decided to switch to a calcium binding ration using a feed additive called Exolite. This was also a good opportunity for us to see how a newer feed technology can work for our barn. Calcium binding works by making calcium in the feed unabsorbable to the cow and trains them to use calcium stores in their bones prior to calving. We implemented this ration on March 16th and are looking forward to seeing the results. We also implemented body condition scoring at the beginning of second semester. We body condition scored our cows each time they were brought in from the dry lot. We did this to see if the ration had any correlation with body condition score and metabolic diseases. Due to frequent ration changes, the number of cows, num the number of cows scored was not enough to draw a conclusion. Hi, I am Liesl Peters. I am from Ildeshane, Manitoba, and I am this year's Range and Forage Coordinator. This year we did a regeneration plan for LCP21. We determined this pasture by going and doing rangeland assessments on a variety of the college's pastures, and LCP21 scored the lowest with a 57. As a range and forage committee, we discussed a variety of ideas to regenerate this land. We discussed doing a high-intensity, low-frequency grazing plan with a year of rest, mowing, letting it grow for a year, tilling, and also spraying. Due to not having very much pasture available, this will probably not happen, but have hopes for next year. This summer, our new dry cow shed is being built, and along with this shed, we are getting around five acres of grazing. We picked a seed mix that meets soil conditions, since this is a sandier soil, and grass that will allow the dry cows to maintain their body condition score when coming off the pasture. It will be seeded once the shed is built. Our grass mix will include, include fleet metal brome, Amba orchard grass, boreal creeping red fescue, carnival tall fescue, and kirk crested wheatgrass. It will be seeded at 18 pounds per acre at a cost of $5.67. The range and forage budget has a 5% increase for next year for a total of $2,104.60. We are still aiming for around 30 days of grazing. Hello, my name is Isaac Boonstoppel. I am from Grunthal, Manitoba, and am this year's reproduction coordinator. For the cows, last year their pregnancy rate was at 13%. They are continuing to improve at this year at 16%. However, this leaves room for improvement as the industry average for this is 18.5%. For the heifers, last year their pregnancy rate was at 25%. They are continuing to improve as well at a pregnancy rate of 30%. In January, we changed our bull selection criteria. We kept the main focus of a 40% focus on production, 30% focus on health and fertility, and a 30% focus on confirmation. However, we noticed that our fresh heifers were coming in with relatively straight legs, which will affect longevity, locomotion, and increased crampiness cases within the herd. We adjusted confirmation's individual traits by lowering the emphasis on mammary system from 40% to 38% and added that 2% to feet and legs to bring it up to 45%. We also added a focus on rear leg side view. This year, we also had the opportunity to work with the purebred unit to implant three of our own embryos. Since we are currently in the process of this, they are in their programs and they will be implanted on April 18th. Hi, I am also the records coordinator. On January 27th, we completed our ProAction Self Declaration. Sometime this year, the new Dairy Code of Practice is being released and I would recommend that next year's records coordinator would update the current SOPs to the new standard. 
At the beginning of the semester, we implemented a new paper records filling system. This binder had all the paper sheets that were supposed to be filled out. Some of these sheets included treatments, vaccinations, animals leaving the herd, cows and calves separate, estimate and fertilizing shots, results from mastitis culturing, dehorning. We implemented this to improve communication between coordinators and farm staff to keep better track of the herd's records and to add a temperature section onto the treatment sheet and to allow other coordinators keep better track of how the herd is doing. We implemented this on January 17th. Once implemented, we gave about a month and a half to let farm staff and coordinators get used to it. After that, we started an accountability program. The results showed a more consistent quality of info. We had positive feedback from other coordinators and there was an increase in communication between farm staff and students. We did not reach our goal, but we did make improvements and saw positive results. Hello, my name is Brooke Jarvis. I'm from Gladstone, Manitoba, and I'm this year's Mixed Farms coordinator. Within the Mixed Farms position, it allows me to work closely and communicate with the other animal science and crop students. On the Lakeland College Farm, powered by New Holland, all of the student managed units share resources. Last spring, a total of 900,000 gallons of liquid manure was spread on LC 14, 15, and 16. This fall, a total of 1.3 million gallons of liquid manure was spread on AL01 and LC 12. The crop student managed farm valued the nutrients of the liquid manure at $13,968. The liquid manure is used as fertilizer on designated pieces of college land based off of a manure and soil sample. Last fall, there was a total of 34 pea straw bales off of AL01 and 155 bales of barley straw off of LC12. Central Feeds produces, purchases, and delivers the bales to the farm. The total cost of straw was $4,282. Straw is then sourced out upon the units based in need and a 15% yardage fee is charged per bale. Hi, my name is Stanley Van Ash. I'm from Iron Springs, Alberta, and I'm this year's research coordinator. Our research project for the year is an NSERC oral neonatal supplement study being done by Dr. Brenda Ralston and Andrea Hansen. So for our study, what we do is within 72 hours of birth, we take both a blood sample from the cow and the calf to test the vitamin and, and mineral levels in the selenium serum and plasma. After this sample is taken, we give the calves either a control of saline or the oral supplement. Two weeks after this is done, we retest the plasma and serum levels to test the difference in the vitamin and mineral levels. So far, we've taken 41 samples, but because this study was only recently done, we do not yet have any data to present. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Derek Nickel. I'm from Colehurst, Alberta, and I'm the finance coordinator for the Dairy SMF team. Today, I'll be talking about our betting demo. I'll be providing an update on the dairy team's finances. I'll be discussing the budget for 2022 and 2023, and we'll be talking about our cost to raise a heifer. Our bedding demo consisted of comparing a mixture of canola straw and wheat straw to our traditional sawdust shavings we use in the barn. The trial lasted 132 days and the straw mixture was used on our parlor side of our free stalls and the sawdust was used on the robot side. We calculated the cost per stall per day for sawdust to be 31 cents and we ca calculated the cost to bed with the straw mixture to be 14 cents per, sh per stall per day. We observed that the straw mixture is more dusty and that we have a challenging time to keep the stalls covered with bedding. And we also noticed some more dirty cows on the parlor side. The trial has since been completed and we have now returned to using uh, shavings throughout the barn, primarily due to straw availability. Moving on to the finance update. Our year end is March 31st. However, since we began preparing for this presentation a week ago, we do not have all the invoices for March. Our first slide shows a year-end income compared to our budget. Our budget is shown in blue and year-end income is shown in yellow. On the left-hand side of the screen, we see our milk sales. We have received our milk statements up until February and are still awaiting for our March statement to arrive. And we anticipate being approximately $100,000 short of our budget of 1.27 million. On the right-hand side of the screen, our, the graph shows our remaining sources of income. We have met or exceeded budgeted amounts for most of these accounts. My next slide shows our sources of expenses compared to our budget. Again, our budget is shown in blue, and year-end expenses is shown in yellow. 
On the left-hand side of the screen, we see our feed expense. We are expecting to remain under budget for feed this year. The graph on the right-hand side of the screen shows our other sources of expenses. Um, our quarter lease deductions were not budgeted for by last year's team. This is the result of changes to the memorandum of understanding between Lakeland College and Alberta Milk. This deduction is removed from our milk statements monthly with plans for it to be reimbursed quarterly in the form of a grant. We are yet to receive this reimbursement, therefore this deduction significantly impacts our profitability. Finally, our records budget was also exceeded this year. This was due to the fact that we assigned different expenses to that account compared to what last year's team did. We've made changes in our budget to accommodate for this. Our next slide shows our sources of expenses. 92% of our, or pardon me, our sources of income. 92% of our income comes from milk sales. This is shown in the blue circle on the left-hand side of the screen. Our remaining sources of income is shown on the smaller circle on the right-hand side of the screen. My next slide shows our sources of expenses. Our five largest expenses are shown in the circle on the left-hand side of the screen. These are feed expense, quota lease deductions, labor, milk deductions, and repairs and supplies. I'll now point your attention to page 20 in the booklet, which shows our budget for 2020, 2022 and 2023. Some notable changes we made include um, increasing our expected milk sales compared to the milk sales we made this year to 1.268 million. This was done because of an increase in the farm gate milk price, which occurred in February, and our high quality corn silage we harvested this year. Uh, we made no change to our feed budget of 751,000. Um, this was because we did not reach this budget and we expect feed costs to increase slightly next year, but we believe this budget will be able to accommodate for this. Um, we increased both our repairs and supplies as well as our manure handling budget by 25% and 10%. This was due to supply chain issues as well as increased fuel costs. Um, our records budget now consists of milk testing, classification, and registration, and totals $15,900. Finally, we added a quota lease deductions, quota lease reimbursements, as well as a utilities expense. We also budgeted for the team to attend the Westerner Dairy Showcase in Red Deer, Alberta next fall. Moving on to the final slide now, which shows the cost to raise a heifer at the DLC. We used our best judgment when making these calculations. Keep in mind that feed, as well as medication expense, are calculated as an average. Our, pardon me, uh, our bedding expense and our medication expense are calculated as an average. Our feed expense is our largest cost. Part of this, the reason that this is, is because many of our heifers are currently on a diet that consists of hay and pellets, which is very expensive. Um, we did this to conserve silage for our lactating animals. We calculated the total cost to raise a heifer from birth to calving to be over $3,800 at, at the DLC. Um, for more detailed information on the dairy team's finances, I invite you to see pages 18 to 20 in the booklet. Thank you. To conclude our presentation, I would like to thank New Holland Agriculture, Jeff Brown and Josie Van Lent, our amazing advisors, Yolette Van Kirk and Amber Sayers, our herdsperson, Tiffany Belbeck, and the rest of the farm team, as well as our generous, generous industry partners. We will now accept any questions. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so the question was, why are we still continuing to use paper records? Would it not be easier if we switch to uh, like computerized database? I will call on Liesl Peters, our records coordinator, to answer this question. So we are using paper records and Dairy Comp 305. The reason why we implemented a paper record system is because we have so many people in the barn with 
farm staff and coordinators, we wanted to have an increase in communication and to allow the students to also see how the animals are doing more easily. Does this answer your question? Yes. So the question is regarding to our herd health. Um, our team has struggled with scours this year. So what would be recommendations for next year's team to um, improve this? I will call on Kim Dornenball, one of our health coordinators. So recommendations for next year, I would recommend that we continue with our heightened biosecurity protocols. Um, I would definitely recommend restricting um, unnecessary traffic in and out of the calf rooms since the more people that go in and out of those rooms, the more disease transmission as well. Like you can actually see that when students aren't in school, our scourers cases are actually a lot lower. So I think this is something that would really help. Does this answer your question? Um, a practice that we could probably do is definitely ensure that our boot washes are always kept clean. Like sometimes the boot washes aren't changed regularly, so sometimes the boot washes can be changed more regularly. Um, even just wearing cleaner clothes in and out of there, I think that that would really help. Like if you wear your clothes from the barn into the, from in between the cows right into the calf rooms, like I think that's something that isn't really good for disease transmission. Does that answer your question? Yes, very good, thank you. Any other questions? Yes. So the question is around uh, activism and how we could um, mitigate that threat. Um, I'll answer this question. Um, at, here at Lakeland College, we do offer a lot of tours of our dairy barn, especially. Um, I think that is one way to help to show um, people who do not come from a back farming background what um, dairy farming is actually like and how we do actually treat our animals. Does this answer your question? Okay, to conclude uh, the question period, we'd like to thank everyone for coming out. I would like to thank the dairy unit for their presentation. My name's Herbert Wagner, and I am going to be the commercial leader for next year's unit. Uh, I would like now to, I would like to bring up the commercial unit now, please.
Hello, everyone. My name is James Kinley. I'm from Cartwright, Manitoba, and I'm this year's general manager of the 2021-2022 commercial beef team. This year, our team consists of 19 amazing people, spanning all the way from Blackstock, Ontario, to the foothills of Alberta. We have a very diverse team, with everyone always contributing and bringing something new to the table. Our mission statement for this year is striving to raise quality beef through educational opportunities and hands-on experience whilst creating relationships within the industry. We have create, created a SWOT analysis for our team this year. Some of our strengths being our team size. This was on our weaknesses last semester, although due to the fact that we have been able to work on multiple different activities at one time, we have decided to move it to a strength of ours. Another strength that we have is our calf sales as well as our low open rate and death rate, which we will both talk about later on in the presentation. Another strength that we have is we are a group of young producers who are always eager to learn and get involved with the industry that we're all so passionate about. Some weaknesses that we have is our online communication, as most of our team can attest, could use a little bit of work sometimes, as well as time restraint is a problem, and the roundup sale timing. The roundup sale is not at the ideal time for us, as it limits the types of animals that we can market. Another weakness that we have is your competition for resources. Especially on a year like this, it is sometimes difficult to determine who gets what types of feed for the year. Some opportunities that we have is to buy pasture land. We are very excited about this, as it gives a great opportunity for future teams Another opportunity we have is our brand reputation. This is the 10th year in operation. This is the 10th year the commercial beef unit has been in operation. Another opportunity we had was to go to Canadian Western Agribition. This was a great opportunity for us to market some of our beautiful replacement heifers, as well as a great learning opportunity as majority of the team had never tended before. Another opportunity that we have is for hands-on learning, and this is what we get through the Student Managed Farm Program. And some threats that we have is COVID-19. Although we have been fortunate enough to be able to be in person for most of this semester, it, it has still had a lasting impact on our overall team performance. Some more threats we have is disease susceptibility, like most cow-calf producers will have the same problems, and feed shortage and feed prices, which most of Western Canada is also facing this year due to the poor drought. Our last threat that we have is public perception. This is something the industry will always face. We will combat this with resilience and passion to educate as well as communicate with, few, with uh, the average consumer. Hi, I'm Kay McDonnell. I'm from Melville, Saskatchewan. I'm this year's facilities coordinator. And these are our previous recommendations from last year's team. Their recommendations were to find pasture closer to college, continue to bring calves home earlier in the fall, continue to work with JGL on our steer sales, maintain the blaze phase program, and if possible, attend Canadian Western Agribition and Czar show with our bred heifers. Our progress report on these previous recommendations are we summered cattle in Lee Park this year. We sold calves directly to JGL. We, t we did attend Canadian Western Agribition. We brought cows home November f on November 4th. We maintained the blaze phase program by retaining 10 white-faced heifers, and we bought an Angus bull. Our long-term goals for our team this year were to aim for moderate frame replacements, increase our weaning weights, make decisions in a timely manner, use break-even analysis to, to market, and reduce our length of calving season. Our short-term goals for this year were to have our average daily gain for our replacements a pound and a half. We, we were very close on this goal. Another goal of ours was to de decrease our death rate to below 3%. We did achieve this goal. And another goal was to increase our discussion, discussion in meetings. We as a team feel we did achieve this goal. And another goal was to increase our profit while expanding our calf crop. I'm Marshall again, and I am this year's data analyst. This year, our calves weaned in at 47% of the dam's weight. We are very happy with this number and believe it is because of the high dry matter percentage from the grass on pasture this year, while still having plenty of grass for the cows to eat. We also had a very low open rate this year of 3%, which we are very happy with, as 
We managed to decrease our length of calving season from 111 days to 77 days. We also had a very low death loss this year, only losing one calf, even though the weather fluctuated a lot this spring during calving season. Hello, my name is Avery Coltart. I'm from Portage La Prairie, Manitoba, and I'm this year's marketing analyst. This year I was able to work closely with Shane Adamson of the sale of 26 steers to JGL Livestock. Uh, the, our additional 10 steers were taken to North, Northern Livestock Sales Pre-Sort in Lloyd Minister, Saskatchewan. On average, our steers weighed an average weight of 664 pounds and sold for an average price per pound of $2.01. Between the two local pre-sorts, we sold 21 replacement heifers this year. Our heifers weighed an average weight of 638 pounds and sold for an average price per pound of $2.05. A marketing suggestion that we have for next year's team is to sell our steer calves at the beginning of October. We believe that the uh, calf prices will peak at this time. This year we were also able to reach our goal of, of having 100 calving cows. This allowed us to call 14 cows to North, North Central Livestock Exchange in Vermilion. These cows weighed in at just over 1,200 pounds and sold for an average price per pound of 84 cents. This year we called the Lewis Bull. The Lewis Bull weighed 1,980 pounds and we sold him for a price per pound of $1.10. This past winter we were also able to sell five newborn calves which we sold for a total of $1,350. Good afternoon, I am Devin Inch and I'm from Cochrane, Alberta. I was the range and forage coordinator. This past summer we had the opportunity to graze pasture out by Lee Park. We had chose this opportunity as it would give the students a more hands-on learning experience as well as lower our trucking costs. This upcoming summer we are still looking at grazing pasture closer to the college to give the students next year the same opportunities that we had. Currently we are still looking for pasture for 120 pairs and we would be very thankful for any help that would help us find any. We would also like to give a big thanks to Carson Seidner for allowing us to graze his pasture last summer. Hi, I'm Ashley Jones and I'm from Vermilion, Alberta. I'm this year's co-secretary and nutrition coordinator. We've had a challenging year as to the results of the drought, but we've thankfully got to work with Riley Noble from Bullseye Feeds. This year, during calving season, we kept our cows on peas instead of barley to help reduce the amount of barley in each ration. We also kept our cows on 1935 mineral because we felt that this helped decrease our open rate. Also, due to the drought, we did not get the same amount of yield from our silage that we had hoped, so we had to use increased amounts of straw in all of our rations. By using this additional straw that we had not planned on, we had to continue to buy it in, resulting in higher ration costs. Hi everyone, I'm Bianca Byers. I'm from Blackstock, Ontario, and I am this year's co-nutrition coordinator and co-secretary. This chart shows our feed expenses per month and by animal type. As you can see, our expenses majorly grew in the months of January and February. This is because we wanted our lactating cows to be on a higher quality ration than they had been on prior to calving. A bonus to this is that we saved quite a bit on the rations before calving. Although we experienced a drought this past summer, we are very fortunate to have learned how to feed with very limited resources. Hello, I'm Logan Brost from Macklin, Saskatchewan, and I'm this year's feeder calf coordinator. This year we brought back the feeder calf program to provide the equine students with animals to use in their handling labs as well as give our team a hands-on experience and background in calves. We were excited to work with other SMF teams on this project. This year we purchased a total of 40 heifers, 24 which came from a pre-sort sale and 16 from the extensive grazing research unit. All heifers were vaccinated upon arrival to follow our herd health protocols. Despite this, we did battle some sickness throughout the winter due to the fluctuating weather, and unfortunately, we lost one calf. We also had another suffer an injury which will require us to market her separately. This, combined with the high feed costs this year, have resulted in a projected loss on our break-even analysis. The picture on the screen is slightly blurry, but we have estimated a loss of about $57 per head, but are currently working with local buyers to market the remaining animals and receive a profit. Hi, my name is Mackenzie Olson. I'm from Tisdale, Saskatchewan, and I'm this year's records coordinator. Currently in our herd, we have 100 cows. These cows are raising four embryo calves for the purebred unit, along with 52 steer calves and 44 heifer calves. We also have 16 replacement heifers and four herd bulls. This year, I had the opportunity to work with Dr. Troy Drake in utilizing herd tracks to the full extent. 
In previous years, herd tracks was only used to keep herd inventory and record tag numbers. We are now using it to manage our herd health. This included transferring all SOPs into the herd tracks, followed by transferring all treatments from the past year into herd tracks as well. Our hope is that next year's team will be able to solely use herd tracks to manage their herd health. Hi, my name is Michaela Farrell. I'm from Bigger Saskatchewan, and I'm this year's health coordinator. Our weaned calves received their fall booster shots in September. We also revaccinated all our replacement heifers this spring. Our cows and bred heifers got ScourGuard and Ultrabec 7 booster shots prior to calving. For our cows spring vaccine, they were given Bovis Shield Gold FP5, which is a live vaccine. We give them this vaccine sooner and chances of having a reaction. We alternate every odd year between Cattle Master, which is a killed vaccine. We do this in hopes of improving our open rate. At branding, our calves received Bovis Shield Gold and Ultrabec 7 vaccines, as well as our steers received Ralgro implants. All our herd bulls are vaccinated and are ready for breeding. Hello, my name is Noah Kehoe. I'm from Beaumont, Alberta, and I'm this year's treatment coordinator. This year, we were faced with a harsh winter, along with a handful of scour and navel infections in our young calves. We treated them with scour boluses and resflor, and we are looking into more prevention methods for next year, like nasal vaccines and updated SOPs. We also treated a few fear calves for BRD. Hi, my name is Liam Reese. I'm from Castor, Alberta, and I'm this year's reproduction coordinator. This past March, we were able to purchase a black Angus bull from Bar EL Angus for $5,250. As a committee, we came up with the criteria as seen on the screen, and this bull met all those requirements. We went with this bull as we'd like to get some more Angus in our calves to get some more moderate frame replacements, as many of our calves are becoming heavily Semental influenced. We, um, and next. We'll turn our bulls out on April 11th for a 63 day breeding season. This is pushed back a week later from previous years to try and avoid having any calves over the holidays. Our new black Angus yearling bull, along with a two year old black Semental, a black blaze Semental, and a red white faced three quarter Semental, will all be out with our cows. And we have an agreement with the purebred unit to rent a black Angus bull to put with our 16 replacement heifers. We have worked with the purebred unit on an embryo contract and five commercial cows will be used as the recipients. The contract is intended to benefit both teams as it will give purebred more potential sale animals and give commercial another source of income. And we're excited to see how these cows will turn out. We've selected 16 replacement heifers for our herd. We put a big focus on performance by looking at each heifer's weaning weight and hours daily gain and then ranking them on a spreadsheet. We also put a focus on overall structure and appearance, and although we aim to keep lots of blaze face heifers, we still prioritize quality over the blaze face trait. Hello, I'm Justin Kane. I am from Manville, Alberta, and I am this year's research coordinator. The Who's Your Daddy trial consists of tracking parentage within our calves. It is done in partnership with West Central Forage Association and Olds College, and involves the collection of DNA samples, which are sent away to be analyzed, giving us the information needed to match our sires with their progeny. As you can see, New Horizon led the way this year with 27 offspring, and although Crossroads Whiteface followed shortly behind, he managed to wean the largest on average calf at 716 pounds. For the past three years, we've used the information from the Who's Your Daddy trial to help evaluate both our replacement heifers and our bull power. This trial has been extended and will continue on to next year. This year, we also began a new two-year trial involving a neonatal supplement in cooperation with Alberta Veterinary Laboratories and Chinook Contract Research. To do this, we took blood samples from both cows and calves shortly after calving, and then again from the calves at two weeks of age. During this time, certain calves were given an oral supplement containing vitamins and minerals such as ADE and selenium, while others were given a saline solution. The goals of this trial are to determine the severity of vitamin and mineral deficiencies within cattle in Alberta, and to also look at the effect that a supplement such as this has on weight gain within our calves. The results from this trial will be interesting to see, especially due to the fact that this is an oral product instead of the more traditional injectable style. The samples have been sent away and the results should be available by next year. 
I want to say a special thanks to Janet and Kareen, the research techs here at the college, as well as all other researchers involved with this trial. Hello, my name is Chloe Parent, and I'm from Clyde, Alberta, and I am one of this year's Roundup coordinators. This year, the team was able to attend the Canadian Western Agribition with a pen of three open heifers to continue marketing our replacement heifers for the Roundup sale in the spring. Our heifers placed first in class, but unfortunately did not move on any further. Kevin Smith from Nova Scotia bought our heifers for $14.75 per head, which was higher than the average of $14.40 per head. In preparation for the show, we started feeding our heifers extra barley at the end of October. Good afternoon, my name is Thomas Clayton. I'm from Glasgow, Manitoba, and I'm one of this year's Roundup coordinators. The Roundup sale took place on March 26, 2022, where we consigned three pens of commercial heifers. Lot 25 sold for 17.25 with an average weight of 766 pounds. Lot 26 sold for 16.50 with an average weight of 755 pounds, and Lot 27 sold for 16.50 with an average weight of 865 pounds. We'd like to thank Byron Halverson and Jim Pulak for purchasing our heifers, and we hope to see you next year. Hello, I'm, uh, I'm Caden Wilson from Carn of Saskatchewan, and I'm this year's Mixed Farms and Risk Management Coordinator. As part of the Mixed Farms Committee, we've successfully updated the Environmental Farm Plan. It's due every 10 years for an update. And uh, we've done this because it's an, it fulfills the environmental component for verified beef production and proaction for the dairy. And then going into risk management, we're currently trying to ensure our calf price for the fall. We're trying to ensure 204, but uh, so far the prices have been too high. And we're doing this in case we see a drop in calf prices in the fall. Hi, my name is Chelsea Kleiss and I'm from Carcers, Alberta, and I'm this year's Public Relations Coordinator. This year, the team decided to do a Facebook discussion post to increase our presence on social media to help increase the marketability of our animals as well as the unit. For our most favored post of the discussion post, sorry, it was, what is, your most, what is the most important item in your calving barn? We are really pleased with the results. As well, this past week, we went down to the Calgary area and toured other producers' farms. This has helped increase our networking and in industry. Hello, my name is Ian Hillis, and I'm from Macklin, Saskatchewan. And I'm this year's VVP and BICS coordinator. For our VVP and BICS update, we have recently recertified our VVP status for the college. As well, we'd like to give a special thanks to Melissa Downing for coming in and training the students in our class to be VVP certified producers. We've also received $650 in rebates from the Business Info Exchange for our, our animals who have reached slaughter in the VVP program. Our recommendations for next year's commercial team are to continue attending Canadian Western Agribition as it is a great opportunity to create a network of contacts and increase our industry presence. We'd also like to recommend that they find pasture close to the college. This has proven to be difficult in past years as the market for local pasture is very competitive. We'd also recommend that next year's commercial team continue our Facebook discussion posts as we have had a great response from viewers and the increase in popularity was reflected in our Roundup sale numbers. We'd also like to recommend that next year's commercial team visit the herd on pasture and develop sale groups prior to bringing them home in the fall. This will increase organization and make the process more economical. Another recommendation we had for next year was for the group to use our call heifers and build our feeder program instead of selling them at market. These animals are used for many labs and supplementing them into our program will increase profitability. Lastly, we'd like to recommend that next year's group look into selling our steer calves privately as we have received a consistent market price with no commission. Hello, my name is Christina Pettijohn. I'm from Council Saskatchewan and I'm this year's financial coordinator. So far this year, we've made $10,000 on our cull cow sales, which is $500 short of our expected income, even though we sold three extra head. On our cull heifer sales, we made $20,000, which is nearly $500 over our expected income. On our calf sales, we sold five twin calves and made $1,350. We also sold a bull and made $3,500 off of him. On our steer sales, we made $50,000, which is $20,000 short of our expected income as we sold 36 head instead of 45. For Agribition and Roundup, we made $22,000, which is nearly $5,000 over our expected budget as we were able to take a pen to Agribition this year. We also were very grateful and 
lucky to have received an egg recovery payment for $23,000. As you can see, the majority of our income comes from our animal sales at 62%. 36 of that is from our steers, 14 is from our cull heifers, 8 is from our cull cows, 2 from our cull bull, and 1 from our calf sales. 16% of our income comes from our egg recovery payment, and 16 is from our agribition roundup sales. 2% adds up to about the rest of the income. This year, we spent $41,000 on our feeder calves, which is about $13,000 under our expected budget. Uh, I'm still waiting on some invoices for this, but we're expecting to remain under budget. For our feed and bedding cost, we spent $61,000, which is $13,000 over our expected budget due to the increase to feed and bedding costs. For our pasture rent, we spent $24,500. It's $500 over expected budget. We left the cows on a pasture for three extra months in order to mitigate the feed costs in the future. We also spent about $5,400 on our vet and medical costs and have about $2,000 left to spend on the rest of the March expenses. We also purchased a bull for $5,250, which is well under our expected budget. The insurance for our bull was $950, and we still have $2,000 left on that budget to pay for calf insurance. The majority of our expenses are coming from our feed of bedding at 37%. Our pasture rent is 15, our feeder calf is 25. Our bull purchase was 3%, as well as our feed, vet and medical expenses was 3 All their expenses add up to about 15%. This year, we spent $162,000 and made a total of $145,000 with a projected loss of $20,000. Once the rest of the March expenses are in and we sell our feeder cows, we're projecting on making an income of $20,000. We are very happy and proud of this as our projected income was only $2,000. Next year's budget, we decreased the cull cow income and increase the cull heifer and increase the steer sales. We also decrease the cull bull and increase the agribition and roundup sales. We increase this as we'd like to see more pens go to agribition. Uh, with a total income of $197,000. This year's, next year's expenses, we increase the feed and bedding to $52,000 to pay for the new mineral program as well as the increased feed and bedding costs. We increase the sale, the show expenses to $3,000 to pay for the extra pens at Agribition as well as the increased commission to the Roundup sale. With a total expenses of $165,000 with a projected income of $20,000. Our cost of production this year was $1.87 per head per calf weaned and our cost to raise a heifer was $1,700. We would now like to thank everyone that came out today to, not, to support us and not only support us but as well as learn a little bit about what we do here at Lakeland College. I'd also like to give a special thank you to everyone here on the board. Without them today we wouldn't be where we are here so thank you very much guys. I will now open the floor to any questions from anyone. That's a great question. The question was, have we considered buying replacement heifers instead of retaining ownership of them due to the economic benefit? For this question, I'd like to call on my reproduction coordinator. Yeah, so we could look into purchasing replacements, but we would like to keep our own genetics, so that's why we have been developing our own replacement heifers. Does that answer your question? Any other questions from anyone? Yep. Uh, is there more potential for income from the VDP Plus program that you've explored? The, the question was, is there more income 
Is there a possibility for more income from the VBP or BIX program? For this, I'd like to call on my VBP plus coordinator, Ian Hillis. That depends on what province you're from, as they're in Saskatchewan, I know that the government will give out grants for BBP producers. You can get up to about $15,000, and uh, you get $18 a head, I believe, on every animal that makes it to slaughter in the program. So that would be your alternative source of income. Does that answer your question? Thank you for the question. Is there any other? Uh, yep. That's a that's a great question. Uh, the question was, what was the most popular item in the calving barn from our Facebook d discussion posts? And for this question, I'd like to hand it over to my PR, Chelsea Kleiss. Um, so our, the most popular item that was um, mentioned was having clean water source as well as having dry bedding for the winters that we have in Alberta, um, keeping everything clean and dry and as well to keep uh, disease infection down. So that was the most um, requested thing to have in your barn. Does that answer your question? Perfect. That will conclude the questions for today. Thank you again, for everyone, for coming out tonight. I would like to thank the commercial unit for their presentation. We are now going to take a 15 minute intermission. Uh, there's drinks in the cafeteria, please come and join us there.
Hello? I'm going to ask everyone to please sit down so we can continue. Welcome back. My name is Scott Lane. I'm from Strathclair, Manitoba, and I'm looking forward to being the equine unit leader next year. I'd like to start off by thanking Alberta Milk for providing us the refreshments during our intermission. Two weeks ago at the Crop Technology Final Presentations, Lakeland College signed an agreement with the University of Alberta. Any Lakeland Animal Science Program student wanting to transfer to the University of Alberta will receive two years credit so that they can complete their degree in two years. We are pleased that U of A has acknowledged our Lakeland College Animal Science Program in this way and our next presentation will be from the practicum students. Good afternoon. My name is Haley Romanovich. And I'm Kelsey Alaniak from Lamont, Alberta. We will be presenting the practicum of 2021-2022. So what is practicum? Practicum is an alternate choice to SMF. You complete a practicum over the summer of 120 hours. And once you return to school, you have an hour each lecture in the first semester and a two-hour lecture in the second semester? I chose practicum because it's a less of a workload which gave me more time to study. I was told by students in the first year that it's an eye-opening experience and I wanted to be one of those students. You get to pick where and who you work for as long as you get the okay from your teacher. For double dip students, it's not an option. They're assigned practicum. And for those of you that don't know, a double dip student is a student who has achieved their diploma in a different course and has come back to receive their AST diploma. A part of practicum was SMART goals. SMART goals are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. My practicum was done through Lara, which is just outside of Bonneville, and the goals I completed were developing and handling biosecurity, collecting data, and developing relationships with producers and the industry. This was done through the community pasture, which we would collect data from the heifers. So we would take weights, tags, throughout the grazing period. So that was June, August, and September. Like Haley said, we set, a, set goals for ourselves. A few of mine were to identify early signs of illness, learn more and different diseases, as well as diagnose illnesses. I got to do this on behalf of NBI Feed Yards and did all of this while having a disease outbreak in the feedlot. Another part of practicum is professional development. So that means we had to watch 10 webinars through um, conferences and then we would have to network with different industry connections and we attended multiple events through the Beef Cattle uh, Research Council and some of the events that they held were keeping records and that was for calving and then utilizing your records later on in the production cycle and this provided a learning environment and provided us with extensive knowledge in the agriculture industry in our second semester, we did journal entries weekly, which involves writing in a journal what you learned in one of your many classes, handing it in, and then getting it back with uh, comments. We, it helps keep you prepared and helps you remember for when you're studying for midterms and or finals. 
The final thing of practicum was discussions. So in second semester, you do two-hour lectures, one lecture of researching and learning about different topics, and then second hour, you would be um, explaining what you learned and sharing it with your classmates. Some of our topics included yonis, BRD, BSC, feedstuffs, irrigation, and predation. This concludes our presentation. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, the outbreak was a disease outbreak, and we, after doing a lot of testing, we found out that it was a disease called eye team. They lose their sight, everything, is, it's like they're blind, and they just run in circles, and then they die. So, <laughs> it's, it, it was really hard to get it under control. But after figuring out which ones were infected, we were able to cull them, and we revaccinated re everyone that came in around the same period. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you, and I imagine that was a, a significant experience for It was, especially from being, I've been on a cow-calf operation for many years, so working in that area was an amazing experience. Thank you. Thank you to our practicum students. I'd like to now call upon the equine unit. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the presentation of the Equine Student Management Farm Equine Unit for uh, the final presentation. Uh, I am Marine. I'm uh, uh, the general manager of the equine team this year, and I am from France. So our vision is to produce, select, and train quality horses with good disposition and conformation in an economically sustainable format. Our herd is currently seven broadmare and seven gadling for a total of $41,500. Hi, my name is Jade Trombley from Regina, Saskatchewan, and I'm this year's secretary and SOP leader. Our strengths this year. Our strengths this year are perseverance and adaptability. At the beginning of the year, we had two teams and two leaders. By the end, due to COVID and other restrictions, we went down to one team and one leader. As a result of this, we had to adapt to overcome certain challenges. We also have integrity as we stand behind our sale animals and work countless hours. Weaknesses. Our main weaknesses this year was being adherence to deadlines and communication within the team. Another weakness was our yearling sale. Our yearlings went for a lot less than what we predicted they would go for. We will talk about this later in the presentation. Opportunities. As of right now, the horse market is at an all-time high, which is a great advantage for the equine unit. We were also able to hold our first in-person sale and spring ranch horse competition. This was a great opportunity for buyers to come see the sale animals in person. 
threats are SMF, vi lack of long-term vision for the breeding program. We are getting a new team every year, therefore it is difficult to keep the same goal going. Due to the drought, we are facing feed and pasture scarcity, as well as market fluctuation. The horse market is at an all-time high, therefore prices may be bound to drop. Hello, I'm Tiana Friesen from Landmark, Manitoba, and I'm one of this year's secretary and SOP coordinators. When we look at our training efficiency, we found that we can ride one horse in a two hour period, whereas a professional typically rides one horse per hour. This brings our training efficiency to a 0 0.5. Our cost per horse road industry standard at $1,200 per month includes the cost of training and feed. Our cost per horse road includes a $30 per hour opportunity cost for training, as well as the cost of feed. Ours rose to just over $800 per month this semester because we made some changes to their ration. The conception rate in industry is 65% and our conception rate was 56%. We believe this was due to the drought. Our goal is to have a 70% or higher conception rate this, following, this coming season and we continue to use live cover as it has the highest conception rate of all breeding methods. Um, that 70% number or more would mean five out of seven of our mares bred. Our cost per full raise came to $2,100. It's going to rise significantly this coming season up to $4,300 because last year we produced bread mares and we didn't have any breeding fees. We look to reduce this cost in the future by purchase of a stud. It's difficult to compare this to an industry standard as it varies in each facility and it's seldom measured. Moving on to our financial targets, we averaged $1,850 for our yearlings at the Roundup sale, which did fall short of our $2,100 break-even and fell short of our $2,750 per horse goal. We believe the target market for our yearlings is different than the crowd that our ranch gildings draw. Therefore, we must alter our marketing strategy in the future, as well as look to produce yearlings with more outstanding pedigrees as we are selling their potential and not their training. As for our geldings, our break-even came to just over $5,700 per horse, and our sale goal was $8,750 each. Our high seller, Henry, sold at the sale for $11,000. Our average for these horses was $9,750, and although that was $1,750 less than the average last year, we still exceeded our break-even by over $4,000 per horse. We believe that um, last year there was a lot of excitement around the first annual roundup sale, which may have driven their prices up. Our reduced price could also have been a result of lack of advertising, but realistically we believe that our geldings received a fair price based on their level of training. As for our production targets, we have five bred mares expected to full here in the next few months, and we'll breed seven mares in the spring. We sold four geldings and two yearlings at this year's roundup sale, and expect to sell five yearlings at next year's roundup sale. As for our geldings, we projected initially to have six for this upcoming season. However, we selected nine colt starters for the team, so we needed nine colts. We had the opportunity to travel across Saskatchewan and Alberta as a team to select these nine geldings for purchase. And this gave us the opportunity for our team bond to grow, as well as gain insight into how to interact with sellers and how to negotiate a purchase. Last semester, we set up long-term and short-term goal. We accomplished our short-term goal by, uh, by advancing the training of our colt and the handling of our yearlings and brown mares. We also developed ration for our sell horses ac according to their need. For our long-term goal, we outline our breeding goal and define a breeding proposal for the brown mare herd. And finally, we develop, we develop our connection within the equine industry by organizing in March our ranch horse competition here at Lakeland College. Hello, I'm Willow Wood, and I'm this year's Equine SMF Finance Coordinator. The Gelding's highest cost of production was their, was their average purchase price, followed by their feed, bringing their, their whole cost of production to being just over $5,700. The yearlings was then supplies, followed by, no, 
not supplies. <laughs> was there uh, sale expenses followed by supplies, bringing their cost of production to $2,100? Our utilities, trucking, and registration and membership are all currently sitting at zero because we have yet to be invoiced for these expenses. Our call horse sales for our broodmares is sitting at just under $4,000 from the sale of our two of our four open mares that we decided to cull due to confirmation and disposition. Our current 2022 Cull horse sales for the geldings is sitting at $5,600, with the extra $880 being from one of last year's sale geldings that we culled due to soundish issues and came in during our fiscal year. The 2022 roundup sale grossed $42,000, with 37 in weanling or our yearling sales, which is sewn in yellow, with the extra 21,000 being from last year's roundup sale. We are slightly over our projected budget for our gelding purchases due to the fact that we purchased nine geldings instead of the seven that were budgeted for. Our bedding budget is also over budget due to the, it not being properly split between the broodmare and the gelding side, as well as being all charged to the SNF team when we share costs with the rodeo barn. Our feed expenses are also under budget despite the feed shortage that we experienced this year due to the fact that we were over budgeted for feed and under budgeted for pasture this year. Our broodmares also came in over under budget, oh my, over budget for our pasture by $1,200 and under budget for our feed despite the feed shortage that we have experienced this year. We exceeded our break even of 5736 for our geldings with an average purchase, purchase price of 9750 each, giving them an overall net average of $4,014. We didn't quite make our purchase price, our break even price for our weanlings of $2,100 with an average of 1850, giving us a net loss on both of $250. Our gross income was 77,355 with our total expenses being 63,293 dollars and7 giving us as a whole unit a net income of 14,061.93. My name is Sebastian Bradley. I'm from Manville, Alberta, and I'm this year's mixed farm coordinator. For our uh, for our progress reports, first we have our geldings. Short term, we had two sale geldings ridden in a ranch horse competition. Long term, we developed the Roundup Sale Showcase and averaged a body condition score of six to six and a half on sale day. Next, we have our brood mares and our yearlings. Short term, we selected the stallions we wanted to send our mares to, and we also increased the handling and the groundwork with our brood mares. Long term, we averaged a body condition score of six for our yearlings, and our yearlings had been clipped, blanketed, and we had worked with them on trailer loading. Hi, I'm Kelly Stewart from St. Bruce, Saskatchewan, and I'm this year's range and forage coordinator. As to the recommendations from last year's team, we branded the geldings on December 9th to mitigate the risk of branding a cull animal. We put out our pasture advertisement on November 15th and are still currently looking. As for the recommendations we have for next year's team, we recommend exploring different marketing channels for the yearlings. We would also like to see the purchase of a stallion to reduce their breeding fees. And lastly, we, our team has decided to leave a timeline for next year's SMF team. As for the grazing costs, the budgeted price while the mares are at the stallion is 2520 and 1890 when they return back on pasture. As for the geldings, the budgeted price is $1,980, bringing our total grazing cost to $6,390. This year's equine SMF team is still currently looking for pasture to rent for our broodmare and geldings. We had hoped for our nine geldings to be on pasture for 110 days and our seven broodmares for 90 days. Hello, I'm Avery Buckberger. I'm from Indian Head, Saskatchewan, and I am this year's feed coordinator. 
At the start of the second semester, the geldings were started on their ration of three pounds of whole oats at 39 cents per head per day, eight ounces of milled flax at 49 cents per head per day, three ounces of pro-stock loose mineral at 12 cents per head per day, and 75 milliliters of flaxseed oil at 63 cents per head per day. Along with the Cody 2021 hay at a cost of $3.43 per head per day, that brought their total ration cost to $5.06 per head per day. <coughs> Our gelding Jack was receiving a different ration as he had a lower body condition than the other geldings. Jack was receiving a morning ration of one pound of whole oats at 13 cents per day and 25 milliliters of flaxseed oil. Jack's afternoon ration was the same as the other geldings except for the added 12 ounces of beet pulp at 26 cents per day. Jack's total ration cost was $5.65 per head per day, thus making Jack's ration 59 cents more than the other geldings. The broodmare's ration consisted of Cody 2021 hay at a cost of $3.67 per head per day, along with free choice trace mineral given at an estimated cost of $0.20 cents per head per day, with the total ration cost of $3.87 per head per day. Our yearlings were receiving a ration of Cody 2021 hay at a cost of $2.32 per head per day, four pounds of whole oats at 52 cents per head per day, four pounds of canola meal at 68 cents per head per day, free choice trace mineral given at an estimated cost of 20 cents per head per day, and 75 milliliters of flaxseed oil given at an estimate or at a cost of 63 cents per head per day with a total ration cost of $4.35 per head per day. In comparison to our semester one ration, our hay cost increased due to the fact that we switched from hand feeding over to free choice, which increased our cost by $1.44 per head per day. We switched to free choice due to the fact that our yearlings weren't meeting their expected body conditions. We also increased the amount of canola meal to increase their protein intake and added 75 milliliters of flaxseed oil at 63 cents per head per day to improve the look and health of their coats. With the additions and increased hay costs, this made our semester two ration $2.41 more than our semester one ration. As SOP coordinators this year, we added 21 new standard operating procedures to the 33 existing ones, as well as revamped some of our old ones. This brought our total to 54 SOPs. We created the new SOPs such as weaning, wound care, halter breaking, and injection sites. Hi, my name is Abigail Grierson. I'm from Provost, Alberta, and I'm this year's Reproduction and Stable Management Coordinator. This semester, our team built a breeding proposal to find the most economic way to breed our mares. The order from most expensive to least expensive method is sending our mares for stud services, leasing a stallion, and purchasing a stallion. We currently use the first method. In this year's broodmare herd, we have seven mares total to breed, with two donations and one rebreed. This brings our current average breeding cost to $700 per mare. In addition to this fee, we have a cost, a mare care cost of $248.57. Currently, Currently, our cost for purchasing a stallion is 14,000, sorry, our costs for sending our mares for stud services is $14,595. If we compared this to the purchase of a stallion, we would be spending $6,820 to breed our mares. This is a difference of $7,775 annually. As stable manager, I input medications as well as feed rations into Equicity, as well as helped coordinate the first year equine students through Equicity, created schedules, and tracked everything that was done at the barn. Hello, my name is Olivia Bay, and I'm one of this year's stable management coordinators. This year we had two cell geldings that required medication. Our cell gelding, Archie, came in from his pen with a laceration on his face, and after a trip to the vet where it was sutured, we treated him with Medicam and Exceed, as well as Hibitane, gauze, and warm water. We then had his sutures removed, and we treated him with polysporin and warm water. Our second cell gelding, Jack, 
Uh, we suspected of having ulcers, so after a consultation with our vet, we treated him with 25 mils of omeprazole once daily for a month. We chose to sedate our cell geldings with dermosidan for their first time being shod. And in addition to our, our medications and sedations, we also vaccinated our broodmares with pneumobort K to prevent rhinopneumonitis, as well as the required vaccinations for being on campus to reduce disease transmission. We vaccinate our horses against eastern and western encephalitis, tetanus, strangles, and influenza. Hi, I'm Jada Bourne from Weyburn, Saskatchewan. I'm one of this year's public relations coordinators. As of April 1st, our total page likes on Facebook are 1,249 and our total followers are 1,358. On March 11th, the weekend of Little Royal, we held a ranch horse competition. Com competitors traveled from as far as Blaine Lake, Saskatchewan and Pincher Creek, Alberta, showcasing their skills in front of a packed house. This year we used the boost option three times on Facebook in hopes of increasing the reach of each post, spending a total of $156 on Facebook advertising. Another way we advertised the sale horses was through wildfire classifieds. Hi, I'm Sydney Vance from Imperial Saskatchewan, one of the public relation coordinators this year. Our most reached post this semester was the online auction post of the Gelding Amigo reaching 22,377 people. This graph shows our Facebook page has reached 51,383 people from January 1st to April 1st. This means the amount of people that saw any content from our page, including posts, stories, ads, and social information will increase the number. On March 11th, the Roundup Sale Geldings were a part of the Western Canadian Judging Competition and the Equine Demo. Two of the Geldings took part of the Ranch Horse Competition on Friday night. This was an opportunity to showcase the Roundup Sale Geldings and expose them to the sights and sounds of the competition. Hi. Oh. Hi, my name is Jensen Pagosh. I'm from Abbotsford, British Columbia, and I'm this year's videographer and AQHA records keeper. As videographer, I created the sale videos for four geldings and two yearlings. I also broadcast a Facebook Live preview of our sale horses on sale day so that our online bidders could view our product prior to the sale. As AQHA records keeper, I transferred, I did I did four AQHA transfers and one APHA transfer. Our Philly June still had not received our we still had not received our Philly June's papers from AQHA by sale date. We will be forwarding them by mail to our new owner once they arrive. Since the Geldings now have the Lakeland brand, I also have to fill out three sets of correction papers. We have also already started to get geldings for next year's cold starting team, so I also had to fill out three sets of transfer papers for them. Hi, my name is Niana Thorpe from Regina, Saskatchewan, and I'm one of the Roundup coordinators for the equine unit. As a unit, we came up with recommendations for next year's Roundup sale. Here are some of the recommendations we came up with. Advertise for the Facebook Live preview earlier. Assign someone to comments while the preview is live streaming. Create a scheduled timeline based on benchmarks or accomplishments of the horses. Create engagement by holding a giveaway closer to sale time and a standard buyer's gift across each major. Here we have a list of the sale day costs. The catalog was $1,418, DLMS was $436, our advertising was $128, our auctioneer was $286, and our food was $275. We would also like to say a big thank you to our buyers, Joyce Walters, Dean Lamberton, Kim Welter, Ryan Cox, Mitchell Omberg, and Murray Martin. Each year, Mixed Farm puts together a list for each unit of what capital purchases they are interested in for the coming year. 
This could be anything from replacing old equipment, such as the chute and the stampede steel, as both the research and commercial teams have listed, or something new, such as the gooseneck stock trailer that our team has listed. This list allows the school to know what the teams feel are important upgrades or investments to put funding towards, or to know what the teams are interested in in the case of someone donating to the school. Although some teams have more listed than others, each of these items are what the teams feel are necessary for the advancement of SMF as a whole. We would like to thank Newhall and Agriculture, our SMF advisors, our Dean Jeff Brown, Tracy Quinton, Denise Martin, our academic advisors, and the farm team. A special thanks goes out to Diamond K Customs, Carlin Rennie, and Dennis's Tack and Leather Shop for sponsoring the halters. And we would also like to thank breeders and service providers that supported the equine unit throughout the year. I now open the floor to any questions. Yep. Oh, sorry. Which one? You can go first in the middle. Our question was, why is the industry rate so low compared to other livestock and how does drought affect that? I'll get Tiana to answer. Um, so I'm honestly not sure why it's lower than other livestock. I'll have to look into that. But um, the drought affects it because um, when the nutrition in the feed is lower, um, it affects if the mares catch as well or not. And that has, yeah, an overall impact on conception rate. Does that answer your question? And you, over here? <laughs> Thank you. The question, though, comes to, uh, to marketing, and you pointed out uh, the sales could be strengthened by uh, better pedigrees. How is your breeding program going to address that objective? So our question was, our sale could be influenced by pedigrees, and how does that affect our objective? Breeding program objective. Breeding pro program objective. I'll get Jensen. Our AQHA records keeper to answer. It will affect our breeding program because, especially with yearlings, since we've been selling them, they don't have any proven tr like training time or riding time. So, if they have proven parents, it's more likely to sell them at a higher price than parents that don't have as many earnings. Does that answer your question? To achieve the pedigrees, um, we would look at better sires that correspond better with our mares to produce the better, I guess, conformational-wise and dispositional-wise horses for, um, I guess, that best suits our market. And we are selling yearlings, so we're selling their potential um, and not any training that they have previously. So have you identified a list of the traits that you're, you're looking to uh, select in pedigree? Is that one of the recommendations? <laughs> Yes, we have. <laughs> yes. So our question was, have we considered the cost of keeping the stud on campus and other costs that come with the stud? I'll get our reproduction coordinator, Abby, to answer. Yeah, so when we built the breeding proposal, we looked at, uh, as you saw, all the different ways that we could incorporate a stallion into our program. And on those, we 
how we came up with those prices was we looked at how much it would cost to put them on pasture or have them on or with the mares and where we would have them and what the feed costs would be and all of that that's uh, incorporated with owning a stallion. Does this answer your question? Is there any other questions? Okay, thank you for coming out to our presentation. Okay, so thank you to the equine unit for their presentation. My name is Gabrielle Chemershinsky, and I am from a small purebred operation just outside of Vegreville, Alberta. And I will be the purebred unit leader for 2022-2023. And with that, I'd like to introduce the purebred unit for their final presentation. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 2021-2022 Purebred Beef SMF Unit Final Presentation. My name is Dixon Tatry. I'm from Youngstown, Alberta, and I've had the pleasure of being this year's general manager. We have 12 team members ranging from Alberta, British Columbia, and Manitoba. This allows us to have varying backgrounds and allows us to have input on discussions and come to a well-rounded decision. Our herd vision is as follows. Our goal is to raise functional, high quality cattle that suit the needs of both purebred and commercial breeders, while advancing student learning and management. Early in the first semester, we set some team goals for ourselves. These goals were to have a strong and proper communication, to create cost-effective rations, to build a strong team bond, and to have our bulls weigh an average of 1,300 pounds at the roundup, and have our heifers weigh an average of 1,000 pounds at the roundup. Our report on these team goals is we had an established method of communication via Microsoft Teams, which allowed us to stay organized and on task, as well as make decisions virtually if we were not able to have a meeting. Next, our nutritionists did a very good job this year trying to minimize and keep our feed budget as low as they could. Unfortunately, due to the drought, we did go over budget, but they were able to keep our, keep our costs as low as possible while not, while not sacrificing the performance of our animals. Next, we had team bonding activities and worked together lots throughout the year, which allowed us to build a strong team bond. And finally, our bulls weighed an average of 1,308 pounds at the roundup, and our heifers weighed 930 pounds on average. While our heifers did not meet our goal, we realized that they were not gaining as much as we'd like, but when the roundup was coming, and we decided it was not worth risking their reproductive performance and longevity by pushing feed into them. Our recommendations from last year's team were to build a strong team bond, have our marketing coordinators begin the plan for the roundup during the first semester, to continue and build on using the AI and embryo program, to continue with the silage program, focusing on the quality of the silage, 
and to contact previous buyers from the Roundup during the first semester. We have a report on these recommendations. We had team bonding activities throughout the year and worked in many different situations, including farm fair and, and exhibition, which allowed us to build a team bond and work together in many different, in many different situations. Next, our, our Roundup coordinators began meeting with the other Roundup coordinators of other SMF units, as well as academic advisors to begin their marketing plan for the Roundup. We, we received donations from other producers within industry of semen and embryos, which we have implemented into our herd to expand our genetic diversity. We have focused on the silage program this year, working with the silage crews early in the first semester we were testing the quality of the silage and ensuring it was adequate and what we needed for our animals. Finally, our buyers were not contacted until the second semester as we felt they would not fully know what they were going to need for the coming breeding season and when we did phone them during the second semester, most of them asked us to phone them back later as they weren't quite sure what they needed yet. And finally, our recommendations for next year's team are to continue to create cost-effective rations as they may still be dealing with adverse effects of the drought in the coming year, to communicate through one centralized platform to help keep themselves organized, to continue to expand the genetic diversity of the herd. This is possible due to the purchase of a new bull this year, 251J HF Showman. Next, we would like them to look at, sell at possibly selling frozen genetics during the roundup in 2023. This will let them access a new market and possibly create more profit for the unit. And our final recommendation is for them to build a strong team bond early in the first semester. My name is Tel Calvert. I'll be doing your SWOT analysis today. I'm from Drayton Valley, Alberta. Um, some of our strengths was like team, by, team by diversity, very hands-on with cattle, uh, good, her, good team size this year. We have 12 members on our team ranging from all the way from Manitoba all the way to BC. Uh, also, we're very supported by Lakeland College this year. Um, some of the weaknesses that we have are uh, strong personalities, strong personalities. We kind of clash sometimes, but it always brings out the best ideas in us. Uh, some small herd size and the genetic diversity. We find it has a, the small herd size. We don't have the genetics that we need to always be performing as well on top with industry. That's why, and we also have scheduling challenges with our classes, with our personal lives, and with SMF. Some of the external uh, SWOT analysis today for opportunities would like, be like marketing cattle, working with other SMF teams, uh, semen and embryo donations that we get from industry and other producers. Some of the threats that we have this year are COVID-19, the feed shortage that we had, the competitive with industry, and the disease. With the disease, we had naval, naval issues in the Red Barn, as well as some scour problems. Good afternoon, my name is Rania Whitwer, and I'm from Tatla Lake, BC, and I'm one of this year's records keepers. This year, for our gold analysis, we had a growth rate of an average weaning weight of 702 pounds for our bull calves, and 681 pounds for our heifer calves. Our average cow weight was 1,383 pounds. The industry standard for weaning weight is 43%, which this year was 595 pounds, which we surpassed. This year we had an open rate of 10.2%, which we attributed to the climate as well as some of our females being overconditioned going into breeding season. This year we ended up with 36 bred cows, 8 bred heifers, and 5 open females in total. Hello, my name is Taylor Carlson. I'm from Elm Creek, Manitoba, and I am the other records coordinator this year. This year, the length of our calving season was 67 days, just slightly over the industry standard of 63 days. We started calving on January 3rd and ended March 11th. This does not include a premature calf born from a heifer on December 27th. Our death loss this year was 3.8%, which fits within the industry standard of less than 4%. This was caused by the loss of two calves out of the 53 born total. This year, the plan is to have all of this year's calves registered in preparation for next year's team before the end of the semester. This year, we had five calves born by embryo transfer, 20 by artificial insemination, and 28 by natural service. 47% of these calves were born in the first cycle, 
42% in the second cycle, and 11% in the third cycle. We also had five sets of twins this year. This year, the purebred SMF unit had the opportunity to work alongside other SMF units in the participation of the neonatal trials that were previously discussed. We also continued to use herd tracks as our main platform because it is user friendly as well as convenient to have all of our information in one place. We inputted all of our health information as well as all of the treatment records and throughout the year we updated our herd information as we went. We also inputted all of the information for our AI and embryo calves that were born this year. Our current herd inventory consists of one open heifer, seven replacement heifers, 45 cows, 22 heifer calves, 30 bull calves, two herd bulls, and two Holstein nurse cows purchased from the dairy unit. This gives us a total breeding stock of 57 animals. Hello, my name is Rachel Chimareka, and I'm this year's Public Relations Coordinator. Public Relations is about connecting with the industry, reaching consumers, as well as updating our social media pages to their fullest potential. Some goals that I created for myself at the start of the school year were to reach as many people and platforms as I possibly could, to capture as many photos within the team that represents our work, and to be as active on our Facebook page as possible. Some social media posts that help me represent some social media posts that helped me achieve my goals were our introduction of the team, which what I did at the start of the school year, a 12-day of Christmas giveaway, which was an interaction with our followers, weekly team updates, as well as our sale lots. Most engaged posts thus far was meet the team with 582 likes. Our followers to date is 1,846, with our page likes to date of 1,777. If you have not done so now, please like and follow our Facebook page. I'm Deanna Hominak. I'm from Grassland, Alberta, and I am one of the health and treatments coordinators. On February 17th, we vaccinated our yearling heifers. We used Bovishil Gold FP5 along with Ultrabac 7 with Somibac in the prevention of IBR, BVD, and black leg. On March 3rd, we semen tested our yearling bulls and palpated our yearling heifers. All of our heifers are reproductively sound. Unfortunately, two of our bulls did not pass their semen test. Due to the vet's recommendations, we decided to call one bull. The other bull is getting retested and depending on his results, further discussion will take place. In addition, we are happy with our results considering the weather fluctuations our animals have faced. On March 30th, we vaccinated our mature cows. We used Bovishil Gold FP5 along with Ultrabac 7 with Somibac. And in addition, we vaccinated our calves using Bovishil Gold One Shot and Ultrabac 7 with Somibac for the prevention of IBR, BVD, and black leg. Good afternoon. My name is Madison Johnston. I come from Rathole, Manitoba, and this year I am also one of the health and treatment coordinators. This semester, our team has treated seven cases of scours, five cases of navel infection, three cases of lameness, and two cases of retained placenta. This year, our protocol for treating scouring calves was with a sulfa scour bolus orally and electrolytes if necessary. All calves suspect of having scours also had their temperature taken. Calves with navel infections were treated with Nuflor. Medicam was also administered if the calf presented lame or in pain. The three cows that came up lame were treated with Medicam, as well as well they received Oxyvet if there was an infection. And finally, our two cases of retained placenta were treated with estrus. The number of treatments this semester are higher than we anticipated. As a team, our recommendation for next year to limit the risk of preventable illness is to more, clean the barn more often, apply lime, and allow the pens to dry out more often. My name is Oriana Hyman, and I'm this year's range and forage coordinator. This year, we currently only have one pasture, and to help prevent the overgrazing of this pasture, we are looking for more. This is the ad that we have placed on our Facebook page as advertisement. Our summer of 22 grazing budget is $11,884.15. Hello, my name is Taylor Carlson. I'm also a nutrition coordinator this year. Over the last eight months, we've worked closely with the research and commercial units in order to create the most cost-effective rations possible. 
In doing this, we have also made use of ingredients that the college hasn't always used in the past. For this reason, our dry and lactating cows, as well as our mature bulls and our replacement heifers have been on similar rations to those animals in the commercial and research units. For more information on these rations, please refer to pages 50 to 53 in the booklet. Hi, I'm Paige McDonald. I'm from Roseau, Manitoba, and I'm the other nutrition coordinator this year. And for our heifer ration, we fed them eight pounds of cody hay, four pounds of corn silage, five pounds of barley straw, five pounds of barley grain, and 0.5 pounds of the 3620 supplement for a total as fed of 22.5. In order to prepare for the 2022 Roundup sale, our sale bulls were on a ration that consisted of five pounds of hay, 18 pounds of silage, 6 pounds of barley grain, 4 pounds of pea grain, and 1.75 pounds of a 3812 bull supplement. This gives us a, gives us a total as fed of 34.75 pounds. Please note that the exact amounts of this ration changed over the months, but the ratios remain the same. And for a mature bull ration, we fed them 10 pounds of cody hay, 12 pounds of corn silage, 11 pounds of barley straw, 10 pounds of barley grain, 0.1 pounds of the 3620 supplement, for a total as fed of 43.1. My name is Madison Johnston, and I am also one of the genetic coordinators this year. On March 30th, we purchased a Scheifelbein Showman son from Hamilton Farms. HF Showman 251J is the complete package, displaying correct feet and leg structure that contribute to his sound movement. This bull is stout made and will add power and performance into our breeding stock while maintaining calving ease. HF Showman 251J is also long spined and packed with natural muscling, checking off all the requirements for the purchase of a new herd bull. As previously mentioned in this presentation, genetic diversity within our herd is a weakness. The purchase of this new herd bull is an opportunity we have captured to outcross genetics, in return increasing our genetic diversity. I'm Deanna Hominock and I'm also one of the genetics coordinators. This year we decided to split our females into breeding classes based on their performance and production. We will have 23 females with our two walking bulls, U2 Uncut and HF Showman 251J. When we were making our breeding program for our 24 females being AI'd, we selected bulls on where we felt improvement could be made. We will be implanting 10 embryos, five of the recips will come from our purebred herd, and five of the recips will come from the commercial herd. We would also like to take this opportunity to extend our thanks to our donors who have sponsored semen and embryos. Respectfully, we would like to acknowledge 2020 Angus, Forsens Marketing Services, Boss Lake Genetics, Brooking Angus Ranch, Gen X, Lazy MC Angus, Poplar Meadow Angus, and Shallow Cattle Company. We appreciate your selfless donation and trust in the growth of our program. Hello, my name is Zachary Kotchuk. I'm from LeBroke, Manitoba, and I'm this year's Mixed Farms Coordinator. So this year for Mixed Farms, both livestock and crop students were tasked with making a summer task list for a farm team to complete over the summertime. This, this list includes and not limited to fencing off on fencing off L <laughs> and L AL01, LC12, and LC12. Uh, we decided to do this because we wanted more pasture in the fall for our cows. Uh, another task on this list is fixing the gates and the latches all over the farm because they are in dire need of attention. Um, also, uh, fixing the pasture, the fence lines on our pasture before we kick our cows out on there. This is ideal because we don't want anything getting out. And also, fixing the water on LC 12, 15 and 16 before research puts their cows on there. I am also one of this year's show team coordinators. So this year, as a team, in the first semester, we decided to go to two shows, Farm Fair and Exhibition, at a total cost of $4,618.68. So a few of the reasons why we decided to go to Farm Fair, because it, it was a close opportunity for us to do marketing, as it was only two hours away and easy to attend. Also, it was a new place for us. Or, oh, sorry. Also, we were, it was convenient for us because uh, we thought our animals were in the best shape as, as they could be to attend the show, and we also did very well. And it was also the first time we showcased our animals, which we are very proud of, and we hope to do that they do good in the future. 
A few uh, reasons for, uh, that we went to agribition was it was uh, there's more publicity in the cattle industry and because there's more industry members that attend. Also, it was a new place for us to market our Roundup sale as uh, the purebred unit has not marketed, marketed this Roundup sale at agribition yet. And also, we helped bring more students into Lakeland College uh, as the faculty had a booth set up there. And we also talked to many young members that were interested in our program. I'm Mariana Hyman, and I'm the other show team coordinator. This past semester, we, we were able to attend the Little Royal here in Vermilion. As a team, we entered three heifers, 6J, 14J, and 24J, and the Stockman's Club also exhibited 20J for us. 6J placed second in our class, and our other two heifers did not make it out of their split. We felt that this was a very good opportunity to showcase 24J as she was one of our sale features in our sale. Hello, my name is Weston Warrington. I'm from Vanderhoof, BC, and I was this year's marketing coordinator. This year, for cull sales, we sold four cows, four bulls, six heifers, two steers, and one 2022 calf. This brought us to a total of 17 heads, sold for $23,695.33. For marketing for the Roundup, we started off the year by making postcards that we handed out at Farm Fair and Agribition. We then sent these home with students at Christmas to hand out in their hometowns. We also made posters that we hung up on the stalls of the commercial and purebred team at Agribition. We also sent these home with students at Reading Week and they got hung up all over Canada and even into the States. We then started contacting our buyers from the previous three years. Tal and I also worked closely with the radio station in town to produce a radio ad that was broadcasted among many radio stations. We also had Miss Rodeo Canada attend and post about the sale on social media. We also had feature lot posts of the day throughout the day, month of March. I'm one of the Roundup coordinators. Um, our high selling animals this year was lot number two, President Jailbird 5J. Uh, he was a deep, soggy made bull. Uh, thanks Kelly and Mel for buying that great bull this year. Uh, lot 22, OAV Judge Judy 24J was the high selling female of her sale this year. Uh, thanks to RG Cattle for buying this great female. I'm also one of this year's Roundup coordinators, and this year the purebred team sold 14 bulls for an average of $3,625. We sold six heifers for an average of $3,500 for making the purebred sale average $3,587.50, making the purebred gross $71,750. So this is the overall roundup expenses. Our auctioneer, lunch, our advertising, our catalogs, our printing, our mailing, uh, and DLMS. Our total expenses were $14,292.58. The overall commission per lot this year was $433.11. We'd like to extend a big thank you to all our bull buyers this year. Our volume bull buyer was Lone Wolf Farms out of Westlock, Alberta. They purchased three of our bulls. Jim Pollock of Northern Livestock Services, Kelly Konechny, Mel Derry, Jason Gunther, Ken Hominuck, Duncan McMillan, Barjale Farm and Ranch Limited, and Seven Pillars Ranch. Thank you to all of the heifer, heifer buyers this year, to Northern Livestock, to Wendy Wills Farms, Barter Cattle Company, RG Cattle, Tammy Krieger, and Justin Garther. Hi, my name is Peter Weitzel. I'm from Fort St. John, British Columbia, and I'm the finance coordinator for the team here this year. So on my first slide here, there's a percentage breakdown of our income on the unit here this year. As you would expect, we made most of our income from the Roundup sale. Our next highest income came from our call sales in the fall and throughout the winter. We also made some uh, commission income. This is due to the fact that our unit eats all the Roundup, sale, Roundup cost um, and then we get paid back by the other units in commission. We had the insurance payout from the bull that we lost in first term and had insured, and we have the bull rental income from the commercial unit. Here on our breakdown of income, you can see that we made a little bit more on our call sales than what we were expecting. Uh, this is due to the fact that in first term, we ended up culling more calves than what was expected. As well as in the Roundup sale, we didn't make quite as much as expected. This is due to the fact that uh, the cattle herd being down so much lower in all of Western Canada, uh, there just wasn't quite as much demand at our sale this year. So on livestock purchases, the biggest thing I'm going to touch on here, 
there's the cost from the cow rentals from commercial for the four embryo calves that commercial cows are carrying, as well as the purchase of the two dairy nurse cows, because our unit had five sets of twins this year, three of those sets being bull calves, so we wanted to give them the best chance possible. Also note that the ones that are 0% do have a number behind them. Uh, they just weren't high enough to be a percentage. Uh, please turn to page 54 in the booklet to refer to how much that actually was. As you can see on our expense breakdown year to date, everything's pretty level. There's nothing too crazy here except our feed. Our feed's $11,000 over budget. Uh, our nutritionists did their best to keep that in check and we thought they did a very good job of it considering the drought last year and the current feed prices. On our cost of production, we have $721 per cow for total and we have $434 per cow for just feed for the winter. Please note that's just on the cow side. On our uh, net income this year, we have $4,289 of net profit. And then at the end of the year, we created a budget for next year's team. We projected that next year's team is going to be making $121,750. We projected that they will have expenses of $111,854. And we expected that they would have a net profit of $9,895. We would like to thank everybody for coming out to our presentation today. We also have a couple other special thank yous we'd like to say right now. We'd like to thank New Holland Agriculture for powering the Student Managed Farm Program. We'd like to thank our academic advisor, Austin Partington, the Dean of Ag Sciences, Jeff Brown. We would like to thank Chris Lehman and Kyle Hafner and the rest of Farm Team for helping us feed and work with our animals throughout the year. We'd like to thank Denise Martin for her help within the school and at our bull sale. We'd like to thank our vet, Dr. Tim Goodbrand, We'd also like to thank again all our sponsors and uh, anim sorry, animal buyers at the Roundup this year. And we'd also like to thank all the other SMF units for the help we've received from you this year. We are now available for questions. Up in the top. Uh, I just noticed in your lactating cow ration for nutrition, you're not meeting the recommended requirement for your calcium and phosphorus ratio. Where do you see troubles coming? Where do you see troubles? So, in our lactating cow ration, our calcium to phosphorus ratio isn't meeting the requirement. Where do you foresee troubles coming with this? That's a great question. Um, one of the issues that we see coming is a potential with um, calving problems. Uh, however, obviously we're past that. Um, that ration has changed slightly since the actual calving period to work on our cost effective portion of our goals there and just kind of covering the very basic maintenance and what our cows need and trying to maintain our baseline there without getting excessive on our costs. Does that answer your question? Are there any other questions? I'm not see oh oh no, never mind. I'm not seeing any other questions, so thank you everybody for coming to out to our presentation today.
Thank you to the purebred unit, and with that, I'd like to thank a couple people that were able to make this year possible. Our farm staff, Leroy Lehman, Amber Sayers, Sharon Ryder, Joanne Dixon, Kyle Hoffner, April Rewillow, Tiffany Belbeck, and Greg Thronson. The marketing department of Lakeland College has provided guidance and assistance to all the units this year. The staff of the informational technology department, including Liam Lawrence, who has ensured that audio-visual equipment is working and that facilitates the online broadcast. Denise Martin and Trisha Mekor for their help in so very many ways. And the administration of egg science, Dean Jeff Brown and Chair Tracy Quinton. And with that, I'd like to call on Jeff Brown for some final remarks. Hello. <laughs> so just once again, I'd like to uh, congratulate all the teams for just an outstanding set of presentations today. I think they did a great job. So I was just talking um, in the break a little bit about kind of where this thing started. When I was uh, instructing way back when, I think it was like even 2011, I think when I first got involved with uh, SMF, uh, these presentations used to all take place in just a little classroom in the Mead building, which is torn down now because it was too small and we're expanding. So it's exciting that we've been uh, kind of seeing this, this level of growth. Um, it's just amazing to me when you look out. I have to thank everyone for coming and supporting the students, whether it be parents, uh, community, industry. Um, and then we have a, a whole uh, online community as well that are, are watching online. So it's just incredible to me uh, how this has grown. So I just want to thank everyone for the support. Uh, the students, uh, if you look back at kind of uh, what their educational career has looked like here, the pandemic lasted two years. These students have started mainly uh, with restrictions all the way through their college career. That brings adversity, which I think is uh, both negative and positive. So one of the negatives, I guess, obviously, is uh, the social aspect, some of the coffee shop stuff that would typically happen with SMF is a little bit tough to accomplish on that side. But I just wanted to say that on the other side of that, there's a lot of positives that came. Uh, and you can see the critical thinking that went into these presentations. This year is different than, uh, than any other I've seen in, in quite a while. So I think that's quite an advantage to your education. It allowed you folks to really think out of the box. And I think you did a great job. It really reflects in the presentations on this side. So um, thanks again to the, all the staff that make it happen, whether it be farm staff, faculty advisors, uh, administration staff to make it possible. There's a lot of people uh, working all week to get to this level of quality of presentation. So just once again, a great job and a final thank you to all the students for being a great steward of the, the uh, Lakeland College's livestock operations this year. So thank you. <laughs> Am I handing it off? <laughs> Okay, thank you for coming and safe travels back home. <laughs>